The following is a Thorf TV production brought to you in cooperation with Jack Thorfinson. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for Sunday Gun Chat, that relaxing time way up north at Mr. Holster's Ranch, where Mr. Holster talks about his weekend events and guns. Let's have a big warm round of applause for that relaxed YouTube personality, Mr. Holster. I'll say he's relaxed, Jack. Ah, he's probably comatose. So Lord only knows if he didn't intoxicate himself so much last night that he's he's probably just dead. Well, he's brain dead anyway. So I'll tell you that. The guy's the biggest more. Oh, Mr. Holster! Hey, <laughs> Howdy, Parch. Yeah, that was it's me, Mr. Holster. Well, let's get this show started off right. <sighs> to the sunny slopes of long ago. Uh, that doesn't heat you up and cool you down all the same time. I tell you, what a lousy week. <laughs> this has been the worst week of my life. And, and I've said that in the past, but this one has been the worst week of my life. And now it's been two weeks since I've gone down and worked on the shooting range, and it's done nothing but rain since. And it is such a slew hole out there that I actually had to put hay out in in the cattle pen with Dozer, the bull, just to give him a place to lie down because it's just become a big swamp hole because it has rained like two inches every day. Absolutely unbelievable. You can't make this stuff up. This is the, another yet another strange spring. And last night and the night before, I had to turn the heat back on in the house. Because I woke up and it, it was 58 degrees inside. And it, it actually froze the other night. So, and it was 80 degrees a couple of weeks ago. It just, oh my God. So, all my plans have been put aside and, yeah. You're like in a holding pattern and I'm starting to get cranky. A little bit, a lot. <laughs> and Jack, you know, I tried to talk about Jack about it the other night. I said, Jack, I've been that been last night. I said, Jack, you know, I am so frustrated right now. I don't know what to do, and I don't even want to. I'd like to go to the shooting range and shoot, but I can't because we we don't even have the shooting range yet. And Jack said, we, well, you know, why don't you just think about that and we'll talk about it again tomorrow because I got a date and and boom, off he went. Yeah. And he didn't even ask me for a, to take the truck and, and borrow my keys because the little stinker made a duplicate key on Mother's Day. Yeah, I looked out the window, and there goes my truck out the gate and down the road. And uh, after him going out and getting that nice rye whiskey the other day, I can't get mad at him. I mean, Jack's, Jack's Jack. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get mad at Jack. So he went out, boom, apparently had a date with a, a set of, uh, he said he said twins. And wouldn't surprise me, yeah. Jack just has the ability to, you know, get, he gets, a, frankly, he could get away with anything. Yeah. So this is what I was going to talk about tonight, this evening, this afternoon, Sunday. <laughs> I, you know, I need to, what I what I'd really like is I'd like Groucho Marx here to, to tell me a bunch of jokes and and, and boost my spirits because yeah, I'm getting a little depressed. Yeah. Any rate, I got out my wife's gun, which is a Sig P250. And it says right here, read manual before use. As for Coda Boy 32, he because he never reads the manual. Yeah. Interesting gun, and of course this is the predecessor of the uh, P320, which is the gun that apparently the military is all excited about and can't wait to get their hands on. And I'm going to tell you what a what what that P320 is. It's nothing but. A gun I've never even... Well, I've handled it in the gun shop just to pull the trigger to try and compare it to this the other day. 
Other than that, I haven't shot it. I, I really don't have the slightest idea. Other than it's got the same slide and frame because they basically cannibalized this gun to create that gun because this gun, an outstanding gun and design, didn't sell very well. And so they were trying to, to salvage what they had, and they did a great job. Well, you know, I don't know because I haven't shot it, but they must have because the military's bought it. So they've sold it. So to me, and from a business standpoint, they sure did a good job of, of taking this and turning it into something else. I happen to like this gun a great deal. And one interesting thing about this gun that I notice right now is it's a lot easier to pull the slide on this, manipulate the slide, than it is on, say, a Glock 17. A little bit lighter tension on that uh, the guide rod spring. A little lighter to pull, which I find interesting. I like it because I'm an old revolver guy, and that's what this is. This is a square revolver. You pull the trigger, and you see the hammer come back, and there's no cocking point. It's double action only, and you pull it back, and it breaks, and there you go. It's a square revolver, and I love this gun. So this is what I thought I'd do tonight. Now that I've eaten up six minutes and, and 27 seconds of your life, you'll never, ever, ever get back again. I thought I'd test this trigger because I think this trigger pull, although I don't have a P320 to test, but I, I'm, I'm guessing that there's a lot of my subscribers that do, and they'll, they'll post down in the comments section what the trigger pull is on their gun, and we can compare them. See, I don't, need to, I don't need to go out and buy one to compare it because you guys can chime in and do the second half of my video. <laughs> that makes the video shorter, and, and you can participate. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do because I was thinking, and I think, because I, I went to the gun shop and looked at one. It was one of those fancy ones with, uh, and Joey Cuz, I'll put a link to his channel right here because <laughs> I like Joey. <laughs> He's funny. Joey Cuz has one of those guns. It's, it's, it's one of those ones with a reflex sight. It comes with a reflex sight. It's got the, the uh, mounting plate spot for it, and it comes that way. And they're kind of spendy. They're like 800 bucks. And they had one of those, but and this is the funny part. They didn't have anything else. That's all they had because they've been selling them like crazy. And I talked to the owner of the gun shop. And he said, yeah, I couldn't give them away for $525 before the, the Army gave them that contract. And since then, I've been selling them at retail. I can't get them fast enough. <laughs> yeah, like 600 bucks a pop, which I think is funny. At <laughs> any rate, I thought what I'd do, because I pulled that trigger on that thing. And I thought to myself, wow, I don't know what the trigger pull is on this, but it feels just like my wife's gun. And it, and it pretty much did. The only real difference is there's there's this little unquantifiable thing about that hammer coming back and the trigger pull and then it releasing that isn't there. But the trigger pull felt pretty darn close to the same trigger pull. So I'm curious to know, and I'm going to test it here with this, you know, but I think this Lyman gauge is, is reading a little high or Mr. Holster is always constantly pulling too high up on the trigger, which is possible. It's it's really possible. Let me tell you, Mr. Holster's never done anything right in his life, so why should he start now? Which I'm constantly reminded about by my wife and, and her kids. <laughs> yeah, that's not a joke. At any rate, so I thought what I'd do is I'd test this thing, and we'd see what it came out at, and then you guys can chime in who's who have 320s and know what the trigger pull is. Because I'm thinking it's the same thing. There is very little difference. Even though the, the 320 is obviously a striker fired gun. I'm thinking the trigger pull is pretty much the same. And where I would right off the bat tell you a double action only is a far better gun to carry. For personal defense. Because you have a little more ability to back out of pulling that trigger if things change. But it, it leads you to the question. You know, if the trigger pull is absolutely identical on the weight, and then we got to, I'll measure the distance here. We'll talk about, you can measure your distance down, who anybody's got to. If you have one of these trigger pulls and a 320, you can pull it and see what it is, and you can measure your trigger pull. And I think 
it, it raises an interesting question if if the trigger pull is the same both weight and distance but it's a striker fire instead of a hammered gun it's really the same gun you see and what kick what I why I'm smiling is this one didn't sell the other one sells like crazy but there really is no difference except for it being striker fired if that's the same and I'm curious it I started thinking about that I'm really curious cuz yeah that's that's the kind of guy I am. I like laughing at, at stuff that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, like the uh, government accountability office. <laughs> Cracks me up. So let's do that. Let's get this thing cracked up. And I'm going to point this gun right at you because I don't care. Yeah. So here we go. Let's give it a Yankee. Well, that one came out at really high for this. Uh, you see, every time I do it, it's different. 7 pounds and 14 ounces, but I really think this is a little high because on my Glocks, this thing reads about 7.5 pounds, and I'm not sure that, you know, they say they're 5.5 pounds, but maybe they aren't. Let's try it again. We'll, we'll hold it a different way this time. Seven pounds, three ounces. And you see, each time I do this, like it's a clock, and you know what? I don't have to because it's double action only, do I? <laughs> yeah, well, you know. I'm used to playing with a clock. Here we go. Seven pounds, 14 ounces. I still think this thing is a little high. And if you have one of these gauges in a 250, I'd really like to know what yours is pulling at. Because I'm really curious about this. Because it's been raining for, for two weeks and Mr. Holster's going nuts and has nothing else to do. So, <laughs> yeah. Try it again. Yeah, well, that isn't right. Nine pounds, seven <laughs> No, that isn't. I obviously made a mistake on that one. Wow. That was nine pounds something or other. Eight pounds. Okay, come on. This is this is all over the board now. I'm going to start over. Three times and we'll average it. Now that I've wasted like three minutes of your time just doing this. This is why Mr. Holster was never an armor. Because <laughs> that's like 90% of what they do. Everybody goes through with their gun and they check them out to certify that. At any rate... <laughs> Yeah, I guess I would have been awful at that one. Night. Seven pounds, six point five ounces. I think that's where we're going to end up. Eight pounds, two ounces. My Lyman gauge is is dubious at best. I think six pounds, thirteen ounces. We'll take the average. Seven pounds, seven ounces. Well, I think that's heavier than probably. I think they're supposed to be. About seven pounds on the 320, but I don't know. Six and a half to seven pounds? I don't know. And Gill, for instance, you, you got a 320. Of course, yours is one of those Massachusetts ones. Maybe they pull heavier. I don't know. But I'm curious. So there you have for the average is uh, seven pounds, seven ounces, right? Isn't that what I said? Yeah, I think so. I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's heavier than I think. Maybe it's heavier than the 320. It just when I pulled that one at the store, the three, the 320, I said, "Yeah, the trigger pull looks just a feels just a little shorter, but it feels like it's about the same weight." So let's hang on here. <laughs> we'll, we'll measure the distance, which I'm I'm going to say right from the bat is a half an inch, but we'll see. We'll go from the tip of the trigger, okay? Tip of the trigger, and I'll, I'll do it off of the some, po some undenounced point on the receiver. Okay, you ready? I, I actually got to watch the hammer when I do that. <laughs> Get the replace point. Okay. Okay, it's right about there. It's a half an inch. It's a half an inch trigger pull. That's what it is. One half inch. 
says I, one half inch. Is that right? He says, yeah, why not? No, it's three quarters of an inch, you see? <laughs> Once again, that's why I was never the armor, nor would anybody want me to be. Okay, let's start that over again. Yeah, just a, just a hair over three quarters of an inch. It's three quarters of an inch. So you can tell me on your 320 what the trigger pull is before it goes bang. Yeah. From, from the starting point to when it releases. Three quarters of an inch on this, and I think it was seven pounds, seven ounces on the trigger pull, which may or may not be right, because I, I, I wonder about that gauge. It seems to be pulling my Glocks at a heavier amount than you'd think they would be. They're all about seven to eight pounds out of the box. And I've often wondered if the trigger gauge is not reading correctly or Mr. Holster is just absolutely awful at it, which is highly possible. <laughs> and so, it's again, Mr. Holster's never done anything very well. All right, so there you go. That That's our Sunday gun chat, and I've eaten up 16 minutes and 20 seconds of your life. You'll never get back again. And I didn't even... any rate, before I leave you, I'm going to speed it up here. I don't want to waste any more of your valuable life. Yeah, I can waste my life because it is definitely not valuable this week. This is what's going on. I'm having a contest. It's called the American Gunfighter 5000 Sub Giveaway, where I'm giving away a $350 gift certificate to Brownells. And all you have to do is get in, to get in my contest is, number one, be a subscriber. Number two, like this video. Number three, in the comment section down below, either just, just comment and tag it with 350 or tell me about your 320 or your 250, and if you got a gauge, what it measures at, or if you don't have a gauge, you can at least measure the trigger pull to see if I'm right at three quarters inches, or see what your trigger pull is on a 320. I just kind of want to compare these two guns because I'm curious. Yeah, because they're made out of a lot of the same components, and, and there you go. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Till next time, from Mr. Holster and Jack, who's not here, but hopefully. Getting lucky with those twins. <laughs> yeah. Go out and stay safe. <laughs>